okay, so it said that velociraptors are nature's deadliest creatures. They can run 40 miles per hour, 50 if they ever got out in the open. Today, we're gonna find out. So here's the rules of the race today. I'm gonna plop on my high heels and I'm gonna start from this blue line. The raptor is gonna start from that tree over there. Get a head start. And then if I can make it to the other blue line before the raptor gets me and catches up, then I saved Jurassic World. The movie is great. I'll never say anything bad about it ever again. I'll tell everyone how much I loved it and yeah. But if the raptor catches me, then I talk shit about the movie in my review a whole lot. Look, it, you put your foot down and this happens. But you're still gonna be able to outrace this raptor, right? Totally, yeah, no. <laughs> if you catch her, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take her down. Thanks. How do you feel? I feel a little nervous. When's the last time you ran full speed? It's been a minute. It's been a okay. minute. All right, everybody take your marks. Claire, ready? Ready. Raptor, ready? One, two, three, go! Player's got a good head start. Raptor's approaching. And, oh, right at the finish line. Almost made it. Ah! Yes. What was I thinking? <laughs> Hello everybody, it's our Jurassic World review here coming to you live from the Team 19 headquarters. I didn't want to put this review out. I wanted to wait a, a little while because I know that everybody is still just like really sugar high from seeing all these fucking awesome dinos on the big screen. But you know, it's time to like, you know, now that we're coming down off the sugar high, it's time to be honest with ourselves, what's going on in this movie. And the main reason why this movie is so disappointing is because there's so many good parts in it. Like, there's so many great ideas. There's so many things that I loved in this movie. And then every time they do something that I loved, it's like they would turn around and do something really stupid to make me, like, it fucking ruin it. You know, they just kept ruining it for me. It sucked. Because, like, I really wanted to like this movie. I really wanted to like this movie. I love Jurassic Park. I saw it in the theater as a kid. It fucking blew my mind. Uh, you know, and, and part of the reason why I love Jurassic Park, the original Jurassic Park, is not only is it an amazing, just perfect film, um, but it also has a lot of like ethics and philosophy in it. The whole movie, there's an entire dinner scene about the ethics of how do you use the awesome powers of, of genetics, you know? I mean, it's like, it's amazing. And it's been 15 years since that Jurassic Park 3 crap that we won't talk about. So it's like they really have like a fresh slate in front of them to really reboot this series in the way that it should be, you know? Because the first Jurassic Park movie is so grounded in realism. Like, the, that's what I love about that movie. It's like everything that they had in that movie, all the technology, was technology that was actually available. It was just like only really rich people would have it, like the night vision goggles and the CD-ROM and the driverless car and all this stuff. But it was like, it was all realistic, you know? And all the characters were really realistic. And I just felt like it was very, very, very much grounded in realism. And in Jurassic World, we finally completely leave realism, any realism whatsoever, and we go off into cartoon land, and the Jurassic Park franchise is no longer what it was, and it's just completely something different. Okay, this movie, the tone is all over the place, all right? It's sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Uh, this movie is constantly misleading my emotions. Like, it has no idea what it's doing to me, as, in a, as the emotional fucking resonance is all over the fucking place here. All right, so let's do an overview of kind of like what happens in the movie. So we start off with a CGI egg. And that immediately tells me that like, you're not gonna see a bunch of practical stuff, which we didn't. So, okay, then we cut to some kids and they're getting ready to go on this trip and they're at the airport. And then we see them on the boat and they come to Jurassic Park. And so the kids finally get to the park and I'm so excited because like, we're finally gonna get to see the park. It's open, it's running. I wanna see all the rides. I wanna see all the dinos. I wanna see everything. And then the movie proceeds to just show you the shopping center and then images of the older boy looking at girls and then the younger kids crying about divorce. And 
then they're like want to see their aunt really bad or something which they haven't seen in seven years so like that gray kid i mean last time he saw his aunt he was like three why would he they be disappointed that they're not getting to spend time with their fucking aunt when there's fucking dinosaurs everywhere why are they so apathetic about dinosaurs and that's one of the main problems that i have with this movie is like the fact that they keep going on harping on and on about how nobody's impressed by dinosaurs anymore Nobody is impressed by these dinos anymore and now they got to come up with new stuff and like I get that it's kind of like a take on like movies the movie industry I kind of get that but at the same time I'm not tired of seeing dinosaurs quit trying to imply that I'm supposed to be bored with a dinosaur because I'm fucking not as an audience member okay I'm fucking here like aren't I Jesus Christ. And finally, when we see Chris Pratt's character, the movie starts actually going, you know. Uh, they have Homer Simpson guarding the Indominus Rex. It's like, why would you get fucking Homer Simpson to guard that crazy monster? Like, he's like, hold on, let me check. Um, yum, yum, let me look at the fucking, my sloppy Joes everywhere. It was fucking weird. And then you had, like, two of the, like, pimply-faced teenagers from The Simpsons, you know, the ones that have the voice cracking. Uh, they were, like, working at the park. Why do you have a bunch of idiots working at your park? I have to say, actually that my, my favorite characters were the raptors in the movie. They were so awesome, they were so cute. Everybody loves Blue. I mean, you can't help but fucking love that dude. And like the relationship they had with Chris Pratt was so fucking adorable, it was like ridiculous. Uh, they moved really great. So Chris Pratt goes to, to the Dominus Rex paddock where Homer Simpson is, is, is there with him and then they go inside and then they find out the dinosaur's still in there and they open the door to try to run out and then the dinosaur ends up getting out. And then the awesome scene where Chris Pratt covers himself in gasoline so he doesn't get eaten. That was totally great. I loved it. I wanted to see more of that sort of stuff. It's very ingenious. I've never seen that before. I loved it. Then Homer Simpson gets eaten. Then the car gets flipped over. That was awesome. Um, and so now the kids are in the little spheroid. We finally get to see them on a fucking ride. I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've seen them on a ride after we see them looking at girls in line for way too long. So they're out there. And then I guess since the kid's been crying about divorce all of a sudden for no reason, uh, the big brother decides to impress him by taking him off road and almost getting him killed. And then they see the Ankylosaurus, which was totally rad. I loved seeing those guys. Uh, and I love seeing the Dominus Rex fight the Ankylosaurus. I love seeing the Ankylosaurus hit stuff with its tail. That's so dope. But then, you know, they, they reenact the whole Tim and Lex scene where they're in the fucking ball. But so they're running from the Indominus Rex. And then, okay, so they try to do another callback to Lex and Tim where the little boy doesn't want to jump just like Tim didn't want to jump when he was on the fence, right? But it made sense that he wouldn't want to jump because A, it's really stressful. There's electricity that's going to be happening pretty soon. That's really scary. And he's also dropping like 20 feet onto the ground, hoping a man will catch him, okay? That's not like water, okay? Water is like you could totally jump at it. It's fine. And if there's an Indominus Rex on your ass, you're not going to say, I can't jump. You're going to fucking jump. It doesn't make any sense. Why did they put that in there? It was an homage. It was not an homage. It was stupid. And then the boys, they go find the original Jurassic Park place which was awesome. Again, that's awesome. Like I wanted to see them explore the original Jurassic Park area and see more of that stuff, you know? Um, but then they end up just like replacing a battery in a car and fixing it because yeah, teenage boys know how to fix cars anymore. It's like, especially these kids, I don't believe these kids can fix a car. And then, okay, so Claire and Owen, they, they are following around and they have the really touching moment with, uh, you know, the Brachiosaur, or the Brontosaurus or whatever he was when he was dying with the puppet head. That thing looked amazing. That fucking was so good. It was so great to finally see Claire, like, treat these animals like not as just a money making tool, but as an actual living creature and like see the magic and the beauty of these animals, you know, and all this stuff. That was great. But then it was totally destroyed in the next scene where Claire, uh, Owen tells Claire to wait in the car because she's wearing fucking heels and you can't walk around in the jungle in heels. And she tells him not to treat her like some fucking animal. Like she just saw an animal die and had a connection with it. And then she goes immediately back to acting like animals are fucking lesser than people. Okay. Her arc went backwards. And also her wearing heels, the whole movie doesn't make sense but whatever okay Claire wore five inch six inch pumps the entire movie okay now I'm a girl I've worn high heels I'm sure a lot of you men out there don't have no experiences with high heels but let me tell you a they are fucking torture devices for your feet all right they hurt so bad like they're so fucking painful and I'm not even kidding you like I hate wearing them they're like the bane of my existence and I just never do unless whatever B you cannot walk on grass with heels. It just does not work. There's nothing to support you. The heel, there's so much weight in the heel that it immediately sinks into the ground, you know? 
It defies physics, it defies logic, it defies everything. So then we have the amazing pterodactyl pteranodon attack on all the peoples, and that was like totally one of my favorite scenes. I've always thought about that, like what the fuck would happen if these guys got loose? Uh, it was so much fun to see them going nuts. Uh, it was the best. I was having a wonderful time. I loved seeing fucking Jimmy Buffett run away with his fucking booze. That was like the fucking, I laughed so goddamn hard. Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffett from Margaritaville. You don't know who Jimmy Buffett is? He fucking drinks, he sings songs about booze all the time and getting high and, and drinking and having a fun time. I love the pterodactyl attack. I love the pterodactyl attack up until they showed the petting zoo thing and I saw the little baby triceratops and I was like, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen because I'm a girl and like that shit just works on me. And then later on they show you know, one of those little pit bull guys trying to pick pick up the, the triceratops and he can't do it because he's too fat, you know, and so he drops him from like 20, 30 feet in the air and the poor creature just falls on its side and like dies. I guess, I assume it dies, but it's like, why are you showing me this? Like, why are you showing me this poor fucking adorable creature being like brutally murdered? Again, it's like, I just don't know. Like, show show some asshole tourists. Show some asshole tourists being murdered. That really upset me. And also, why? Oh, it was so cute. Why would you do that to my emotions? Okay, so during the Pteranodon attack, which is awesome, uh, they have a brutal sequence where uh, Claire's assistant, who has been charged with babysitting her nephews, uh, is picked up by one and then dropped and then another one picks her up and then they take her over the mesosaur tank and then they keep dropping her in the water and then diving in and like bringing her back up and dropping her and drowning her and like clamping her on her stomach and it's so brutal like it's a brutal murder that we're watching for a character who has done nothing wrong what did she do wrong like why did she deserve this brutal death and hoskins who's supposed to be the fucking bad guy gets killed off screen with a little bit of fucking blood on the fucking thing what He's, I guess, supposed to be the bad guy, but there's really no real bad guys in this movie. What else fucking happened? Jesus, this movie. Okay, so now let's talk about Dr. Wu's character, uh, B.D. Wong. He's the only character from Jurassic Park, the original, who has come back. And so, yeah, it's good to see him back, but, you know, it, even his character was, like, really confusing because I didn't know if he was a bad guy or a good guy. It's like, is he just doing his job or is he taking more liberties than he should? It's just so vague. And then he has, he's like, oh, the deal stands with Hoskins. You know, he's talking to Hoskins, oh, our, our deal stands. But then that dude dies. So like, what deal? Like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I don't know. Like, and then you see in his office, he has little spines in those jars. And it's like, what is he doing with these spines? And you never get to know. But he like, you get this mad scientist feel from him, but then they never actually do any real hard mad scientist stuff with him besides just like developing Indominus Rex. But then again, they keep showing you that he was asked to do this, you know, like his investors and, and Claire and everybody was like, oh, you need to make this. So it's like, it, it releases him from any responsibility. So it's just a little, it's just awkward. You know, I just don't know how to feel about him. You know, and that's, and that's again, like the whole problem with this movie is this movie doesn't know how to make you feel. It doesn't understand how it's making you feel. It doesn't understand where to lead your emotions a lot of the times. Uh, and it's just, it's just really frustrating. So now that shit has really hit the fan, uh, engine comes, they take over. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is like, we're gonna use the Raptors. We're gonna use the Raptors. We're gonna test them in the field. We're finally gonna test them in the field. This is what I've been waiting for. I'm so excited. Chris Pratt finds them and he's like, wait, what are you doing with my dinosaurs? And they're like, we're gonna put them in the field. And he's like, what? Why are you doing that? And he's like, we're gonna do it with or without you. Even though Chris Pratt barely has any sort of management over these animals. I mean, he's just barely connecting with them. They're not trained. They're not completely controllable. Why would you let these fucking crazy monsters out? And why would you, why would you possibly even think about letting them out without Chris Pratt there to fucking guide them? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. So anyways, they let the raptors go. They fucking go find the Indominus Rex and surprise the Indominus Rex is part raptor. And so then the raptors, they, they're turn cloaks. They're turn cloaks. Their field test is totally ruined when they decide to go with the bad guy and they become homies of Indominus Rex. So then they all start fucking killing dudes together. And it was really great to see the raptors finally running full speed because that's one thing that they always mention in these movies is like, oh yeah, they can run 50 to 60 miles an hour, but you never actually see it, but you finally get to see it. And they looked awesome. The weight of them and the way they moved and all that stuff was like super dope. I love seeing the raptors go. Uh, they were my favorite characters in the movie. In fact, they, they were better. They were more likable than any fucking human character in this movie not kidding at all so uh they finally they they get back 
and uh, the Raptors uh, finally decide to work for Chris Pratt now. They're like, you know what? Never mind. We're on your team, bro. You know, you're cool. This guy kind of sucks anyways. So they start fighting the Indominus Rex, um, and then they're just unceremoniously killed. I mean, like, they're putties or something. Even though they've built these animals up to be, like, kind of the stars of the entire movie, they're just kind of killed easily and, like, it's no big deal. And there's even you never even, even get a moment of seeing Chris Pratt with the animal while it's dying like he did earlier. You never see his emotional shock at seeing these animals being fucking killed. And you never have a moment to, like, pour one out for your fucking homies. You know, nobody even gives a shit what happened to these fucking raptors, which doesn't make any sense because the whole movie is building these fucking raptors up. Because the raptors are my favorite characters. And you know what? Apparently Hoskins was fucking right, okay? So the bad guy who I'm supposed to hate for wanting to use dinosaurs against other dinosaurs, well, apparently he was fucking right because now Claire goes and she fucking goes to the T-Rex paddock and she yells at that dude to open it. And then she runs from a T-Rex in heels, in six inch heels, uh, and does the flare thing. So now the T-Rex is loose. He starts he starts fighting the, the Indominus Rex. He starts getting his ass kicked until Blue shows up. Then they double team him. And then at the very end, the Mesosaur, Deus Ex Machina, comes, jumps out of the, the tank and onto the thing and eats, pulls the Indominus Rex into his, his swimming area. I feel like this movie jumped the shark a little bit. And it's like, there's no coming back from that, okay? That was so silly and, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's like, come on guys, really? <laughs> ah. So now uh, that, the, that the Indominus Rex has been dispatched, uh, the T-Rex and Blue, they have a fucking bro out moment. They bro out each other and then they leave. And then they all hug it out. And then uh, I guess Claire's made to feel like she's supposed to have babies and give up her career. And that's the end. And that's the message. Because she looks at the kid, like she sees the family together and she's like, my life isn't as fulfilling, you know? So it's letting you know if you're a career woman that, you know, your life isn't as fulfilling because you don't have children. So you're less of a person. Thanks, Jurassic World. I really don't ever want to see a movie about Jurassic Park dinosaurs being used in the military and being weaponized and being in a war of some sort. I just really don't want to see that. That would really upset me. That's not what these movies and should be about. So now let's talk about the theme. There was a moment that I really loved in this movie where Chris Pratt is talking to Hoskins and you know, he's like, oh, you got control over these animals, you know? And he's like, I don't control the raptors. I have a relationship with them. Um, and it's like, that was like my favorite line in the movie. It was perfect, it was perfect. And that should have been their theme and they should have taken that idea and infused it throughout the entire movie and continue to show that similar theme of like, it's not about control, it's about having a healthy relationship. Which is like a lesson and a philosophy that I feel like the Western world really needs to like, get on board with and realize and stuff like that, especially after training my cat. It's like having a cat, it's like, I don't control beings. You know, you can't, you don't control cats. You have a relationship with them and they work with you because they respect you and you respect them. And that's fucking awesome. You know, it's like, what a great interpersonal relationship that you have. Uh, more honest than you have with actual other human beings, in my opinion, <laughs> a lot of times. So yeah, like that's just like, what a beautiful idea. And I'm just so sad that they didn't take it and just really run with that idea and really just suffuse it throughout the whole movie, you know? And it's just, this movie, ugh, it's just so frustrating. It's so frustrating because it's so good. It's like, there's so many good ideas. There's so many fun things, you know? And it's just, it just is so easily fixable. And that's another thing that's like, that's why this movie's so frustrating. It's like, I just feel like this movie could have been so easily fixed. They just need to work on their script a little bit more. I don't feel like the script was done. Uh, I feel like they definitely needed another pass. They needed to take out any of the weaponizing of the dinosaurs. I don't want to see any of that militaristic bullshit. So that's it for my super positive Jurassic World review. Uh, feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Facebook for all your Comic Book Girl 19 news and updates. Let me tell you about Epic History X-Men Volume 1. It's now for free on YouTube. You can check it out. It is so awesome. It's over an hour long. It's filled with amazing information about my favorite mutants. Uh, you can learn a lot. You won't be disappointed. It's the best video we've ever done to date. 
holy shit, go check it out. And also volume two of Epic History X-Men, where we're going in depth into um, some Phoenix and Dark Phoenix Saga awesomeness. Uh, that'll be forthcoming in July. So be on the lookout for that on Vimeo On Demand. Uh, over and out. <laughs>